Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Aerial Assault for the Game Gear. We are now on round 3-1. This is the third mission of the game, and it encompasses two stages, round 3-1 and round 3-2. This one starts off with a few fighter planes and even more mines, as well as the tile enemies from The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, moonlining in this game because... After Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, it was hard for these guys to find work. The villains gotta eat too. But the worst enemy of all is coming up. Not quite sure if you saw that one. It was a turret. It moves across the floor and it shoots these green balls for projectiles. And not only do these green ball projectiles bounce off ceilings and floors and walls, they also do it three times before disappearing and they also tend to bounce, or rather home in on you with each bounce. After three bounces, they're gone, but still, those projectiles make the floor and ceiling turrets the most annoying enemies in the entire game. And of course, with those moving turret enemies, we now have a new obstacle in the form of ceilings and walls and floors. And if you run into any of those, it is instant death. It will be an insta-kill, not even the barrier, which only helps protect from anything that hits the front of your ship directly is going to save you. Matter of fact, if you get hit from above or below by the green ball projectiles, even those will still one hit knock out you, so you definitely want to pay attention for that and just keep a good eye on where those ball projectiles are going. Going through the third mission, especially round 3-2 without getting hit, took a lot of experimentation. It took a lot of practice and experimentation just to figure out how not to get hit once and keep the five-way shot, because the longer you keep your five-way shot in the third mission, the less of a pain the third mission is going to be. Matter of fact, I had to take a breather after recording the entire third mission because even though I was able to do it in one take, just trying to figure out how to do everything like I wanted before I recorded this footage was just absolutely draining. And it just absolutely drove me nuts. If it isn't already obvious, this is where the learning curve just goes haywire on you a little bit. And this is where the game is at its hardest. Once you make it past Mission 3, though, the worst is over, more or less, and you should be able to beat the game rather easily. Also, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the maintenance workers were on that, or replacing air filters. Thankfully, I didn't have to get, have mine replaced, though. So that's a thing. And I wish I shot that guy down, but it's whatever. I'd rather get away from the ball projectile than die. And when you see this glowing red fence in the background, you're getting pretty close to the end of round 3-1. There will be some tourists. There will still be the Gundam enemies, the little red Gundam enemies walking forward and shooting forward and only forward. But... If you can stay back just enough, the turrets won't be much of a problem. You can take out virtually anything. Getting through mission 3-1, round 3-1, is a bit of a snap. Thankfully. And after that one last power-up, it won't be long before the speed of the screen scrolls forward a little faster. I believe it does do that here. Indeed it does. You can kind of tell just by looking here that the screen it does scroll a little bit faster near the end. Not too much. But the enemies do come a little bit faster. Thankfully that doesn't last for long. And then you go to round 3-2, which is the fifth mission second to last stage in the game and 
this is where it gets a lot more enclosed. You're going to be dealing with the, with the turrets a lot more often, and they're going to be in more confined spaces. You want to center yourself as much as possible. See if you can use the five-way shot to take out the turrets as quickly as you can. Some of them you may have to wait and then just get on in there and then you have to destroy them that way. Thankfully, if they have to shoot a ball towards you while you're right next to it, it comes out pretty slowly. So you have time to avoid it. But other times, you may not be so lucky. I call the second half of the mission very shortly I'm I took the stage and mentally split it into two halves we're pretty much nearing the end of the first half once we get the power up that is here we're now in the second half I honestly had to put a save state here at this position just so I could practice this part of the stage a lot better. Because this is where 3 2 really starts to get difficult. Because I'm having to avoid a lot of the green ball projectiles. Knowing how well they work, it's definitely not an easy task. It's never an easy task. There is that turret there that will come out from behind. If you can time it right, if you can position yourself just correctly, it won't bounce over to that narrow corridor to the right. It won't really bother you. At least the first shot won't. I'm pretty sure you can get both shots to do it. I've done it at least once. And here, you can get an extra life from a power-up ship. If you know what you're doing in here. I kind of wait until I can get close enough. Wait for three projectiles to be fired and then move on in and take that turret out just way close up. Right there. There are a few times when you will have to do that. And here, getting rid of the turrets here is pretty easy, and I usually just stick to the bottom route because you'll be better able to maneuver once you're down there anyway. You get two power-up ships here. The first one will contain a barrier. The second one will contain a speed power-up. Speed power-ups barely show up after the first mission. And here, I stay below the ceiling and then when this bouncing thing that's pretty much a new enemy for this area manages to start bouncing over that small wall there, that's when I'm able to move in and the turrets aren't able to give me a lot of trouble. And there is another barrier so soon after the last one. I guess they expected you to take quite a few hits here. And here, I somehow managed to luck out, not get hit by any projectiles, and take out both of the turrets there. Now at this point, you'll start seeing a bunch of tiny square-shaped walls right here. For this part, you want to get at the bottom. That way, the green ball projectiles will not bother you. And just avoid anything that comes your way, or fire at it, in case it's not a green ball projectile. Watch those green ball projectiles carefully. Use your barrier if you have to. There's a power-up ship. Once you manage to find that power-up ship, it's on the boss. And here, I like to stay just above the ship because there is a turret there that will fire a missile 
or rather a projectile and I want to be very careful as I fight this thing because it does shoot out these little probe droids that will try to shoot at you try to shoot in at your current position but thankfully I managed to avoid it apparently the shot only goes up and to the left there But thankfully, that boss was pretty easy, even if you don't have the five-way shot. And next up is the final stage and the final mission. Join me next time where I go through the final mission and take care of the enemy forces once and for all. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!